Welcome back to another episode of PT Meal Podcast, a buffet of play, therapies, movement, exercises, activities, and leisure, all packed in a hearty conversation of physical therapy profession and practice. I am Johan De La Paz, your host. Welcome to the show. So for today's episode, it gives me great pleasure to have in the podcast Dr. Rolando Lazaro, a professor in California State University, Sacramento. He earned his Bachelor of Science in Physical Therapy from the University of the Philippines, Master of Science in Physical Therapy from the University of the Pacific, his uh, Doctor of Physical Therapy from Crichton University, and his uh, PhD in Health Science from Duro University. He has published works in numerous scientific journals and edited and chapter authored in numerous textbooks as well. He is also the editor-in-chief of the Philippine Journal of Physical Therapy, the official journal of the Philippine Physical Therapy Association. So let me welcome the podcast, Dr. Rolando Lazaro. Dudan, glad to have you here. Thank you. Dudan na lang. Dudan na lang. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good Okay naman. Okay mm-hmm. naman. It's getting colder. Right, yeah, right. As you know. <laughs> oh, oh. Which is nice. Ang hirap na bumangon sa umaga. Malamig na talaga siya. <laughs> That is true. All right. So we're going to talk about, because um, we're familiar as physical therapists, when we hear about publishing, usually mm-hmm. narinig natin, it's just about publishing in scientific journals. And yeah. um, bihira lang natin ma-encounter ma- physical therapists. I, I mean, for me, I mean, uh, fellow Filipino physical therapists in, in the, the textbook. Publishing. Uh-huh. Uh, so yeah. we're gonna talk about that later. So, but before that, could you give us uh, a little background history on how you started, you know, your career in physical therapy, and what led you to, you know, you know, your current role now? So um, this was a long time ago, <laughs> so mid eighties, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I graduated in the mid eighties. That was I, I taught so UP, fresh out of uh, graduation. I had didn't know what I was doing. Um, so Kawawa was the chant at that time. But I did I did okay. And then I moved to the States, like most Filipinos, right? Wanting a better life and all that. So that that was one of the reasons why I moved. And then, you know, there's plenty of opportunities over here. Um, I really wanted to pursue higher education. Because mm-hmm. I I really enjoyed teaching Dun sa Pilipinas. I, I I felt like I I really made a difference. So I knew that if I was going to um, follow that pathway, mm-hmm. that I needed to pursue higher education. So I did my master's, that was I did my DPT, that was I did my PhD, that was, you know, that was, <laughs> that's it. That, that would be the end um, mm-hmm. for me um, for that. So that's that's kind of like how the process went. I've been... I was a clinician for many, many years. And then, like many Filipinos then, tiba, clinician ka, tapos I started just helping teach uh, part-time, part-time, lab assistant. And then before I knew it, I was handling a course. Mm. Tapos uh, next semester, they would ask me, did you want another course? And then, mm-hmm. did you want another course? Until I was almost having a you note. Know, Two full-time jobs, one in the teaching side, that was the other one is still a clinician. And then mm-hmm. I just decided to pursue uh, academia full-time. Mm-hmm. So that's when I uh, started really teaching full-time. So uh, two private universities in Northern California. That was, uh, and then most recently I moved to uh, no, California State University, Sacramento. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm, I you know there's, what, four PT schools here in Northern California. I'm kind of moving around <laughs> doing my Northern California <laughs> tour. Although I've been part of an Aden. I, I helped, I collaborated with people at UCSF as well. So almost all the schools in Northern California I've been involved with. Mm-hmm. So you knew Buhayko as mm-hmm. an educator. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you've, you know, as I mentioned, um, when I've got publications, scientific journals and in, in, in textbooks. So mm-hmm. how did that, you know, that path in, you know, writing and publishing start for you? Yeah. So I, one thing that I'm really fortunate about mm-hmm. is I know I had mentors na, who opened doors for me. Mm-hmm. And now that I'm at this point in my career, I also wanted 
to give back. So mm -hmm. I wanted to be mentors to others. And we can talk about that mm -hmm. uh, later. So my first teaching assignment was at the University of the Pacific. Um, and so I was, um, during that time, I already was uh, specializing in geriatrics. Mm -hmm. But I was also really heavily you know, involved in neuro. I wanted to really uh, learn more about neuro rehab neurosciences and all that. So I was fortunate enough to be mentored by Dr. Darcy Alfred. So she was really my mentor. Um, she opened so many doors for me. I'm really forever grateful sa kanyang support, compassion, love, um, understanding. So she, I learned a lot from her um, with regards to the, you know, to the business of writing for books, mm -hmm. for uh, Primarily, mm -hmm. so I started. Ano din ganon din yung one edition. She asked me to ano to help write a chapter, and then before long I was writing two chapters, three chapters, and then before long I was already one of the section editors. So mm -hmm. there were three section editors for that. And then when she retired, um, I felt like there is there because I'm for this quite big, as you mm -hmm. know. Um, yeah. I felt like there was a need for someone to continue on the work. Mm -hmm. um, and so I asked the publisher if it was okay that I took over mm -hmm. the public the, the book. Because I know I've, I've yung last edition before I took this on my own, I was really heavily involved in it as well from start to finish. So I kind of knew the process. I knew the people. Mm -hmm. So I was I was kind of like the logical choice to take over. Mm -hmm. So I did without really realizing the, you know, the amount of work that's involved in it, right? Mm -hmm. So publishing, one thing about publishing for, you know, book publishing, so publishing for textbooks, right? Uh, in this, uh, you don't make a lot of money in it. You see, I nga. Yeah, walang, walang pera sa publishing oh, really? ng, no, <laughs> ng textbooks. It's usually labor of love. So I tell my students, right, um, it probably makes me enough money to ano, to upgrade my burrito to a super burrito. <laughs> like, <laughs> or like, I can afford guacamole or something <laughs> like that. So hindi talaga siya mal malaking pera. Hindi kind of, it's not like, you know, Harry Potter or... Uh -huh. Fifty Shades of Grey. Uh, Hindi ganun kalaki yung walang wala, walang wala talaga. To think a lot of PT schools are using that or uh, medical know. schools <laughs> naman are using that. Mm. I know, which is which is really kind of amazing. But that's kind of like how mm -hmm. book, textbook publishing is. I think in general, mm -hmm. walang masyado yung pera. It's all about you know, labor of love, mm -hmm. um, being able to kind of give back to the to the community and to the profession. So that's mm -hmm. um, Fred for, so I was really lucky um, with that um, Young seventh edition. Mm -hmm. Came out maybe two, three years ago, I think we're getting ready for the next edition. So mm -hmm. we're, maybe next year we're, we're gonna start to plan mm -hmm. for that. Uh, that was uh, Jung, and then Jung, the, Jung, the next one, now I'm involved this with is Jung Good with Catherine Goodman, mm -hmm. so Goodman's differential diagnosis yeah. and Goodman's uh, pathology text, mm -hmm. right? So what's nice about Goodman too, hindi naman sa pagmamayabang kasi mal malaki din yung responsibility, right? Uh -huh. So good the two Goodman books are really always in the top ten ever since ano it got published, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Top ten of most used textbooks in ano in PT schools in right. the United States, right? Very helpful in that mind. Mm. Yes. Well, I didn't pay done. <laughs> I didn't pay done. So we're not doing that. <laughs> but, you know, I enjoy, I really enjoy the editing process. So mm -hmm. with Goodman, actually, ano ba ako? Nagumpisa ng saling pusa, third choice or whatever. Uh -huh. Someone someone dropped out. Uh, tapos, it was actually a friend a friend of mine who uh -huh. you know who asked if I was willing to take over a chapter mm -hmm. that he's um, writing a part of. Mm -hmm. So I said, "Sure, anong book?" Tapos I'm a good man. Di na ano naman ako siya. Ay, that's big. So I did, and um, what happened? I I went ano 
just head first. I was so yes lang ako ng yes. Hindi ko pa nga alam pa yung topic eh. It came, it, ano, it came about na yung topic is about ano, renal disorders. And I had I really didn't know much about it. Mm-hmm. But I'm you know, I'm persistent and I'm ano, um, I just really wanted to learn from it. So I uh, read and uh, interviewed people and whatever. And then wrote the chapter um, and then communicated really well with Catherine Goodman. And so she apparently was impressed mm. with the chapter. Mm-hmm. And so that's where uh, everything started also. So mm-hmm. when she was looking for people to collaborate, I, I volunteered. Yes, la ako ng yes kasi. That's another <laughs> So that's one thing about me that I tell people too. Um, mag-isip ka munang maigi before you say no. Mm-hmm. Kasi you don't know what doors you're closing if you say mm-hmm. no. So right. baliktad yung iba, yung iba sabi, di ba sinasabi yung work-life balance, you have uh-huh. to say no, whatever. Right. Baliktad ako. <laughs> I just go na lang ako ng go. Kasi mm-hmm. nga, and it, it worked for me kasi yung many doors have been open that I just sometimes when I think about it I would just I feel like I was so blessed or so lucky to be mm-hmm. part of it right but it it is also a lot of work mm-hmm. so a lot a lot of work and you have to I know you have to really present your best work Kung mm-hmm. di, if I didn't present my best work kay ano kay Goodman di wala din ako dito right, right. Mm-hmm. and so yun nga hard work um expertise mm-hmm. and collaboration those those are really you need to really collaborate in many ways and so that's mm-hmm. what happened so with goodman yung differential diagnosis um i co edit edit that book that's coming mm-hmm. out um uh, hopefully by csm in february so right. it's in kind of like pre-production right now finalizing um uh, pages so we're going to look at the pages Mm-hmm. Tapos, ano, hopefully it'll be published by February. Mm-hmm. Yung pathology book, yung makapal, mm-hmm. we just finished that in, I think, 2020. And that would be the last time that Goodman is ano, editing that text. So I'll, I'll take over that book too. That's a huge, that's a huge book and a huge undertaking as well. Mm-hmm. Nice. So one important, one kind of thing that I did with both well, both three of the books that I'm editing right now for PT is whenever possible and whenever the opportunity arises, I pull Filipino PTs mm-hmm. who have the expertise to do it, uh, both uh, in the, here in the States and then internationally, because I, I believe in their work as well. I know mm-hmm. that they're going to do a good job with some mentoring. So that's when I know Mark, um, mm-hmm. as you know, um, I, I knew Mark from CSM. Tapos, we just got to talking and then I knew his expertise in aging. Mm-hmm. Tapos, when that opportunity opened up, I said, I'm, Mark would be good at this and then who else can be good at it? So I pulled other people Now I know. Mm-hmm. So, Fred Neuro Rehab, I was looking for another, a section editor. So someone who can handle something that's really big. Mm-hmm. Um, and we'll hit the ground running. Mm-hmm. So I I, I remembered uh, Miles Kibben. Mm-hmm. She is the chair of uh, the PT department at University of North Texas. And so, and she said she was a UP grad. So, and she's really heavy in neuro and geriatrics as well. Yun pa isang taong hindi, ano, hindi natutulog. <laughs> <laughs> and um, go, din siya na, go, go din siya ng go. So I, offered this opportunity and she said yes fortunately so mm-hmm. that really enhanced the book mm-hmm. really well so that kind of is in a nutshell um how i got into this mm-hmm. publishing uh business for textbooks right you know both uh, mentor and then both i know open doors lang talaga. Mm-hmm. Ah, okay so it's you know, somewhat uh dahil kakilala mo sila then then nag snowball na after that yeah because of your work na, yeah. na, na, nalaman na na so if you're you mentioned early like when you take over a chapter do you write it from scratch ganun ba nangyayari if you like do a chapter in a book uh-huh. usually mahirap uh, usually I just um, 
edit update heavily. Uh, mm-hmm. Though up uh, because I want it. So I'm not writing from scratch usually. Mm-hmm. Uh, kung I will take over a chapter. Mm-hmm. However, I will heavily, heavily edit it because mm-hmm. I really want my voice to come through. Because mm-hmm. usually it, it would be a reflection of that point of your perspective of that person. And I wanted my perspective to show. So I mm-hmm. would heavily, heavily edit it. But mm-hmm. I will keep, uh, no, Shemta, I will keep the important points, mm-hmm. especially if it was really nicely written mm-hmm. that I can't really, you know, in, I don't want to change the essence of, you know, a point or a statement or a concept. I right. will keep it. Because mm-hmm. um, I learned a lot then because, you know, people think so differently. It's like, oh, I never even thought about it that way. It's just, it was just said or presented beautifully. Mm-hmm. So when that happens, then I keep it. Um, mm-hmm. I have written, I uh, know, chapters, well, new chapters from scratch. You know, it's more Because it takes really a lot of, uh, a lot of um, research. And then you really have to have a, a clear idea of what you wanted to write. Mm-hmm. It, it, it will take so much time uh, mm-hmm. to write uh, a, a completely new chapter. Updating, it's maybe a month. Mm-hmm. to write uh, pero pag writing a new chapter matagal siya uh, <laughs> three to six months siguro uh-huh. to really make it uh, the way you want it mm-hmm. I've researched it yung mga books natin nowadays how uh-huh. often do they create a new edition? so typically ang cycle niya is five years mm-hmm. okay. so five year ang, ang target mo is to uh, create a new edition every five years. So, mm-hmm. ibig sabihin, pag a uh, year, maybe year three, mm-hmm. after publication, kabaho ka na uli. Mm-hmm. So, okay. you, even year two, you start planning year two, tapos year three, you identify mm-hmm. authors, and then mm-hmm. you, I know, you invite them, and mm-hmm. then you start kind of uh, writing the contracts and all that. And then year four, you na yung, ano, heavy na on the chapter development. Mm-hmm. That was right. fifth year towards pub- that. That would be the publication part of mm-hmm. it, you know, editing, uh, proofreading, mm-hmm. typesetting, stuff like that, uh, and then publishing mm-hmm. as well. That's ano nga eh, especially now, kasi nga di bang lab- ang bilis lumabas ng ano updates, right? right? Minsan if you start it ano three years before publishing or two years before publishing, panis na. Uh, baka may lumabas ng bago. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, so, what we're hoping to do, and you'll see this more now, is yung mga um, uh, companion textbooks electronically, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Dun, dun ka usually merong, it, it would, merong parts as part of the resources, yung mga update. So, if you mm-hmm. wanted to update, that would be the part or or the um, opportunity for you to do so. Mm. Para nga ano, para you keep up to date. Mm-hmm. So mas may yayari. mas may pressure these days na the the output is more updated and yeah, yeah more recent. Mm-hmm. Definitely. So a perfect example of it was ano, COVID. Mm, the right. pathology book, right? So it was just starting yung COVID. I think during that time. So a funny thing, one funny thing about that too was the yung ano yung let me just share this because I thought it's it's funny. Yung actually original cover ng pathology book was a virus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that looks it looks like the COVID virus. Uh-huh. So so sabi na na hindi na mo pwedeng COVID virus yung magiging ano magiging uh, cover page ng pathology book. So we changed it. We had to change it to something different. Um, <laughs> and then so COVID, right? So mm-hmm. it was just beginning. So like, what can you say about COVID right. at that point in time, right? Mm-hmm. Kasi alam mo, pag na-publish yun, panis na, ano, wala na yung ano, mm-hmm. updated, outdated na yung, ano, yung sinasabi mo. Right. So you really have to write something just generic mm-hmm. about it and always have a disclaimer na, you know, by the time this is published, there's probably more information mm-hmm. available already. Right. So you have to really be, be judicious on what you'll say mm-hmm. about it. And, and every, I think every article for uh, about COVID, free access ngayon eh, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there a difference 
if you're writing for a textbook and writing in a scientific journal and, that, and how different is that yeah it's it's a little bit different in that must i know um when you're writing for textbooks i i feel that it's a little bit more f- free for you to i know to put put your point of view your perspective on it because mm-hmm. you're also adding your opinion your clinical pearls your mm-hmm. purpose yung, um what the expert opinions are mm-hmm. although you want it evidence-based as well you want your book to reflect uh current practice right mm-hmm. and then so one one good thing i learned from my two mentors Catherine goodman and darcy Humphrey, is that you always have to look in the future mm-hmm. and you always have to push the envelope talaga. so mm-hmm. you know uh, they're they're great in that sense because they're really able to i uh, know almost predict what the future is because mm-hmm. they have really good insight mm-hmm. so you know your one foot is in the present and then when you're writing for textbooks one foot is in the present and one foot is in the, looking at the future mm-hmm. pag, ano, pag um, many people don't know and i think this is also important to note that textbooks are also somewhat peer-reviewed mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Because uh, they nung, nung iba, ay, textbooks lang yan, ano lang yan. Uh, it's, it's only the view or opinion of the writer, mm-hmm. which is not totally uh, true because good textbooks undergo peer reviews then by colleagues. So either the publishing company hires or invites people to read the chapters mm-hmm. and then provide feedback. Or you actually solicit feedback from peers mm-hmm. and other people whom you don't know mm-hmm. to give you really honest feedback about the chapters as well. Mm-hmm. And so I personally, I enjoy writing textbooks a little bit more because you have the freedom mm-hmm. to, to do that. And you have to, I know, you have the freedom to, to inject your voice and your perspective in the chapter. Sa, ano, sa writing for ano, scientific journals, um, it's somewhat to me, uh, to me, it's somewhat a game too, mm-hmm. right? Because you have to, ano, you have to configure your manuscript to fit what the journal is expecting. Mm-hmm. So it has to do with the aims and scope of the journal. Mm-hmm. So para ma-accept yung publication mo, yung paper mo, you kind of have to configure the writing to uh, know, to fit what they're looking for, right. number one. Number two, I mean, it's heavily peer-reviewed, which is really good, right? Because you have people who are supposedly experts in your field reviewing the manuscript and providing feedback. Um, if, you're, uh, know, if your main goal is to just publish, right? Sometimes um, you might get... Uh, critiques or feedback na, um, that would make you maybe water down a little bit what you're saying mm-hmm. para lang ma-publish. So you play that game too. Right. You know, there's that dance in that game. And so if your goal is to just publish, which it is, right? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you have to play that game para ma-publish ka. And some, ano, most peer reviewers are really good, but some of them can be also, ano, ruthless. <laughs> uh, I've had my fair share of rejections. Yung mga iba, masakit talaga. Siyempre, personalin mo yun because you put your time, energy, money, right? right? Uh, convictions on it to just mm-hmm. say, this is just nothing. This is a piece of whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it really hurts as well. Uh, as in, diretsong, ano? <laughs> Meron mga ibang ganun. Pero, like, I would tell, ano, people who would peer review, um, you have to do it with kindness, right? Mm-hmm. Because you ne- you don't really know the perspective of that other person, right? right. You might not know. So mm-hmm. you have to always do it with kindness. You can make an appointed critiques, but do it you know, with grace and humility as well. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's the way. Most of the ananaman is like that. Mm-hmm. One thing, though, is... Um, and I've I've uh, heard this with I uh, know with um, collaborators from the Philippines as well, so I don't know if they kind of see it with the style of writing or whatever, or maybe it's not totally blinded, but they would always mention something about 
the manner of writing, which irritates me mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes. What do you mean? Because, like, um, it it may sinasamula it may not you may want um it it is an unusual na line you may want a native speaker to review your article um mm-hmm. to uh and suggest edits or something like that mm-hmm. so i won't go and I, I guess i i come in with the perspective na um we write really well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> As Filipinos, we can write well. We're good in English. We've mm-hmm. learned English. Right? Well, I guess maybe because we have a little Filipino slant mm-hmm. in our English. Maybe that's what it is, right? But uh, no, you, you see that pattern happening. Mm-hmm. And um, uh-huh. <laughs> maybe I'm just too sensitive. Uh, <laughs> it, it, had, it has not happened lately pero mm-hmm. ano when i was beginning or when i'm collaborating with someone mm-hmm. who's from the philippines or other mm-hmm. countries ganun usually merong comments na ganun ah uh, medyo ano din pala no um kay the cutthroat nga na you should have like a thick skin when you're yeah uh trying to publish yourself and submitting your yeah. <laughs> articles yeah um, yeah yeah and you know, um, yeah, I, I guess I've developed a thick skin. But mm-hmm. din eh, ma, ma, it's it's really hard mm-hmm. to kind of get those feedback, especially if you've invested a lot of your time and energy right. on it, right? So mm-hmm. you you know, if if you want to publish, you have to do mm-hmm. it, right? You right. have to play the game. You have to do mm-hmm. the dance. Right. Yeah. For those who you know uh, wanted to start their writing career, probably. <laughs> wanted to go to you know submit their some articles in scientific journals uh-huh. how how would they how should they start where should they begin now i think that's an excellent question so as uh-huh. so let's i guess we can talk about it within the context of pts right mm-hmm. right so i still firmly believe especially in the filipino context that th- the best way at this point in time for you to you uh, know to contribute to the scientific literature is to write uh, descriptions of patient encounters, i.e. case reports to start mm-hmm. with. Mm-hmm. So, because uh, it allows other people to, uh, know, to learn from your experience mm-hmm. because you're describing um, a patient encounter that you did. Maybe you did something special. Maybe you did a technique that is special and you applied it in a different setting or a different population or a different condition Mm -hmm. and it worked right Mm -hmm. and so i would hope that people write that for publication number one it helps our colleagues Mm -hmm. uh, to learn that oh that worked for this person and i have a patient that presents with something that's similar so Mm -hmm. maybe i'll try it right it that wouldn't happen if it's not disseminated through publications. Number right. two, what's nice about it is that you're actually not reinventing the wheel mm-hmm. because you already did it. Ang, ang ano lang, ang, the only thing that's missing is putting it on paper. And mm-hmm. I guess m- having someone mentor you on how to write it, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but it's it's I know it's doable. Mm-hmm. It I don't think it's doable to I know yung at this point in time, right? Especially if we're talking, I guess even here, right? Within the Filipino context, so practice in the Philippines to do RCTs, uh-huh. right? Because number one, walang pera, walang mm-hmm. funding. Um, bureaucracy is just so hard at this mm-hmm. point in time. I hope people prove me wrong mm-hmm. with that. But from my experience, mm-hmm. even at UP, mahal ko yung eskwela, pero bureaucracy for getting ethics review is really quite challenging Mm -hmm. Um, I hope they make it easier not easier well you know same standards but a little bit more efficient Mm -hmm. and that kind of hinders to the the research process so hindi 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 masyadong feasible Mm -hmm. so regular therapy so write this write your descriptions of ano of patient encounters submit it for ano muna presentations kasi it's easy. That's a little, a little bit easier. So baby steps. 
So maybe you'll start with a poster presentation. Mm. It's kind of fun to present posters. Right. I think people when people I know get into poster presentations, it's kind of addicting actually. Because mm-hmm. you need you, you meet people, you get to I know network in it mm-hmm. on it, and then so you can do podium after that. You seen sabi ko nga pega in yung muna right pega in yung publication, so um, do the case report, present it, and then publish it. Mm-hmm. as a case report. Um, tapos pag may, pag ano ka na sa case report, well, maybe you'll do a case series. So, you know, a series of patients with the same, similar condition, you did similar treatments, mm-hmm. and then you compare, mm-hmm. right? Something like that. Or you do marami, single subject designs. Mm-hmm. So there is, there is really a lot of ways to do that. And, mm-hmm. Uh, if people are interested, look me up because I'm really hoping to mentor people to be able to do that because I think that would be a good first step for right. people to do. Um, if you want to do it in smaller groups, uh, scoping reviews mm-hmm. or systematic reviews would be good mm-hmm. for you, a good pathway for you. I don't think people know that the, the work involved in <laughs> systematic reviews are very you know, tedious, tedious as well. Mm-hmm. And, Tedious siya talaga if you really want a thorough systematic review. But I mean, it should be that way because it, you know, it really is a higher level of evidence. Right. So it has to be, I know, really mm-hmm. systematically reviewed. Mm-hmm. But so, so to me, those would be, I know, good ways to do it. And find a mentor. Mm-hmm. Find a mentor. People, people who are, I know, willing to, to work with you, to... Um, publish right there are a few people out there who might Mm -hmm. who will be willing to help you i am one and i can tell everyone now i don't need the credit to be able to do i'm not asking for credit when i I know when i offer my services what i just want people to i know to publish Mm -hmm. to be able to take it to you know full step maraming tao let me tell you this there are many people who present Right, so if I you might have seen the PPTA announcement for the for their I know, annual scientific conference, right? Mm-hmm. That was they have a call for uh, uh, present, poster presentations or abstracts right. or whatever, and they're limiting abstract abs, uh, two abstract submissions per person, which kind of tells me that there are a lot of people who are I know, submitting, submitting mm-hmm. right? And so because they want to limit, so my my thing is, ano nang anyare? Bakit hindi na, why is it hindi na pa, pa, hindi umaabot dun sa last step which is publication uh-huh. yeah publishing because mm-hmm. you know I attend I used to attend the PPTA conferences I I know I I whenever I can I um, attend or read yung mga capstone presentation of the schools sa Pilipinas ang gaganda Mm-hmm. The quality, I know quality presentations really. Um, many schools. So ang tanong ko, how? Ano? What? Ano? Bakit mm-hmm. yung ano? Why is there a disconnect? Mm-hmm. It's the ano? It's because sir, hindi ko alam ano. I don't know what to do. I don't know what uh, the next step is. I don't know how to write it. Mm-hmm. Right. So actually, what I've started to do now too is ano, write shops. To get the faculty, yung, okay, kung meron kang ano, if you have a presentation that you want to turn into a manuscript, join us. And mm-hmm. we're gonna, I know, we're gonna expand this a little teaser uh, through the PPTA is we're gonna have a write shop to, I know, to encourage people who have a presentation who want to transform mm-hmm. that presentation into something that's publishable. Mm-hmm. We're gonna teach you how to do it. Mm-hmm. No, no promises, of course, of publishing. <laughs> Pero we promise you that by the time we're done with the right shop and it's over maybe two months, because mm-hmm. we do it piece by piece, a little bit at a time, you will have a manuscript that's worthy for submission to a right. journal. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to be sub PHJPT. It could be whichever journal you want. Mm-hmm. Our intent is to just get people to publish. Should the, should the schools... Uh already start uh, guiding the students yung format ng thesis nila or whatever into mm-hmm. a, a, a uh, to the direction of uh, submitting it to journals. 
that would be my ano that would be that would be my preference i think it would be good we're mm-hmm. we're kind of bound by tradition ba mm-hmm. and even in this country but but it's changing right mm-hmm. don't sa pilipinas and then many of the schools in this country would want like a you have to buy, you know bind mo hard siya <laughs> hard mm-hmm. bound mm-hmm. may special paper mm-hmm. but i mean my ek ek you know whatever uh-huh. right so like gold na- like gold lining <laughs> Yeah, mm-hmm. mga good. Yeah, mga oh. maraming ekek na ganun, uh-huh. right? So, pero doon na lang, doon na mamatay doon. Mm. That so like a good example of it would be ano, UC San Francisco and San Francisco State. Mm. Yung ano, yung kanilang DSI program. Um, yung um, research uh, product nila is a ano, a manuscript for publication. So they don't really require. I don't know if they changed it, but they don't really require, like a you know a thesis, na mm-hmm. <laughs> hard bound or whatever. Deal. Yeah, but um, by the time you finish, you should I uh, know publish mm-hmm. and look at the outcomes. Right, almost all, if not all, of the I uh, know of the works outputs mm-hmm. are published. Because mm-hmm. they nawawala na middle I uh, know middle mm-hmm. thing, which is the a hardbound copy. Right. Then I eat one of the Yeah. <laughs> the other challenge too, I think, is that, and this is kind of sad to say, but the reason why we're here is because of this. Faculty don't also know how to write for publication, which is kind of sad, right? At this, but I could under, totally understand, right? Because mm-hmm. they overwhelm sila. No one has really mentored them how to how to do that, right? Mm-hmm. So very fair, I, I think there are a few schools that do a good job of mentoring faculty to write. Like mm-hmm. UST is really good. UP is good as well. So they, mm-hmm. they have people who are capable of mentoring people how to write for publication. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, yung mga iba, walang masyado. Mm-hmm. They don't know because they have not had the opportunity to be mentored. So that's what we're trying to change, mm-hmm. right? So my intent is to do this write shops for many uh, schools in the Philippines mm-hmm. and then do it uh, via PPTA as well. Because if there are many people who can do it, you know, it's many hands make light work or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. So it would be easy for many people to, uh, know, to be mm-hmm. mentored. Mm-hmm. So hopefully uh, it would be easier mm-hmm. for then the students can do that. Right. Later on, even undergraduate thesis, even like BS thesis, spread the shaft, spread the shaft guided really well. And I think the by universities in the Philippines are expected to create, you know, knowledge and literature, publish. Yes, uh-huh. um, and I know this because I did a presentation about educational requirements for uh-huh. the Philippines, the uh-huh. so CSM. Mm-hmm. So what I found is there is really a research requirement. Mm-hmm. So, ang output nila is a capstone of some sort. So, mm-hmm. many, uh, at least the ones that I've known so far, mm-hmm. have this ano, thesis component, mm-hmm. undergraduate thesis component. I think almost all the programs I know right, right. have it. So, so, you know that the potential is there. Uh-huh. Hindi, la lang, hindi lang na fulfill. That's true. Kasi, I mean, yeah, you and daming output. Parang saan yeah. na pupunta. Sayang nga naman. Yep. So, uh, I think now we're the schools are more conscious now that you know ito po itong submit for poster or for publication at least you know mas nandandang consciousness and yeah I think faculties now na narin are doing their PhDs and yes. you know, masters so yeah for the faculty saying din kasi kasi you mentor mm-hmm. the students mm-hmm. right you put your time and energy mm-hmm. um on mentoring them maybe mm-hmm. original idea mo pa ngayon sometimes mm-hmm. right na binigay mo lang sa estudyante so that they'll have a project sometimes right, right? so i mean you should also get credit for it right mm-hmm. so i firmly believe in that mm-hmm. right you can be an author part of that authorship is there mm-hmm. hindi lang talaga siya na ano na we realize mm-hmm. yung last step laging kulang mm-hmm. so hopefully that will change so talking about uh PPTA and uh, mm-hmm. PH uh, JP the Philippine Journal for uh, of Physical Therapy. So, mm-hmm. paano siya? Kwentahan mo naman kami. How did it start? How did this project undertaking start? Okay. <laughs> so this is again ano ang team ulit dito is ano uh, 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> Just say, say yes. yes. <laughs> say yes all the time. So um, I, I know I am a contributing faculty at University of St. Augustine, mm-hmm. which is for those of you, you may know this, it's I know. I think it's the school that produces the most PTs in the United States, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's a good school. Marami campus, yeah. Mm-hmm. Saka malaki yung kanilang ano, uh, admitting class. All that. I think there's 90 in a cohort. Wow. Um, and then do it. they do it like three times a year. So marami. Wow. Uh-huh. And then multiplied by their many campuses. Mm-hmm. But they, they also produce really good students as well. Mm-hmm. So they, um, as they wanted to... Ano, to improve their uh, publication, ability to publish. Kasi mm-hmm. nga yung mga thesis again and all that ng mga studyante nila has to have a repository for publication. Mm-hmm. And so they actually have, they bought a software that allows you to, ano, to manage publications. Mm-hmm. And then they put a call, one of this, one time I was, actually half awake at that time even they were saying if you have an idea for a journal let us know hmm. so because they can house it and they can do something huh? so this would be a good you know, opportunity for us to to you know to take advantage of and that's you know that that idea of uh universities publishing mm-hmm. many many universities actually have the capability to do that now mm-hmm. um and so because the software that's required to actually manage publications is fairly easy kasi yung pathway niya consistent, right? Mm-hmm. So madaling, you know, madaling gawin yung algorithm ba kung paano nagpa-progress yung submission. So anyway, so I reached out to RV Vitente is mm-hmm. a core faculty sa uh, University of St. Augustine. I knew him from other writing uh, tasks in the past. So RV is an RV Panga is an he's he's a really nice guy. He's, I see him as kind of like the ambassador of PT in the Philipp, <laughs> Philippine PT ambassador because uh-huh, uh-huh. he knows he knows most everybody. <laughs> right. And so I thought RV would be a good person to I know to kind of connect with to see if we can pursue this I know this uh, plan. So we started you know, investigating it and then we got an approval from this side. That was Prinesent Namisa PPTA. We have this opportunity to open it to start a journal that um, is really essentially you know, young publication costs, even though it's digital, it's all you know, covered. Mm. So they really don't have to you know. That it's going to be high quality. We're going to make sure that it's high quality. We're going to put systems in place to make it high quality mm-hmm. and reputable. Mm-hmm. And so, and come to find out, they've been trying to do that on their own. Mm-hmm. So I could understand you logistical issues are right. difficult, mm-hmm. right? They really need to partner. So we, I know, we kind of did that partnership. It took a, about a year. Mm-hmm. to kind of get it off the ground, which is, ano, mabilis nga daw ni sabi nila, mabilis siya. Mabilis but, niya. <laughs> yeah, by, ano, we just kept pushing talaga. Mm-hmm. Kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And now, we're open for business and we're mm-hmm. hoping people would, ano, would submit. Ito yung, ano, yung, an example na, um, when you build it, they don't necessarily come. <laughs> Um, so you have to, I know, you have to, I, that's what we've learned. We have to really, I know, make people capable of publishing, like what mm-hmm. we talked earlier. Because right. uh, what I found out is marami pang tao who need help mm-hmm. uh, kind of navigating that space because they don't, they don't know how to write, what to write. They have something already. They just don't know how to publish it. So that's what we're trying to do. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we'll get um, publications coming in mm-hmm. or submissions coming in pretty mm-hmm. soon, I think. And right. we're hopeful to do that. So for, for PhDT, JPT, uh, mm-hmm. is there a type of uh, study that uh, puede lang or... Kahit ano, like from case K 
case report to a systematic review. That's right. Mm-hmm. So we're open. Yeah, we're open uh, regarding the variety of mm-hmm. I know or types of articles that you mm-hmm. can submit. Um, so we, we can do case reports. We can do case series up to I know uh, RCTs and uh, systematic reviews. Mm-hmm. We even decided very recently because I'm like, "Do you I know will you?" entertain uh, research protocols. Kunyari, mm-hmm. they developed the a protocol that's worth, I know, worth publishing. So I mean, sure, uh, it, we would uh, do that. Kasi, how, as long as ang focus no research uh, protocol is something that would benefit mm-hmm. the Filipino uh, perspective. That's, mm-hmm. that's what we are focusing on. Mm-hmm. We don't right. want to, because if people can publish anywhere, right? right. But we're pub- what we want to publish are articles that's really important within the Filipino uh, no, perspective. Context. Mm-hmm. Yeah, context, yeah. So an example of it is yung mga art, uh, studies, marami, th- this one I found out too, marami. Pe- m- many people are doing this. Again, hindi siya nag-cross over to publishing, right? Yung translation of an outcome measure into... Mm. Tagalog, Bisaya, Ilocano, Kapampangan, whatever, right? Right. Mm-hmm. We feel that that's so important within the Filipino context. Kasi nga, sure. kung hindi mo, if you don't ask the question within that particular context, dialect, or language, right? Mm-hmm. You're missing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what we found is that marami, marami sila. There are many people who have done research on that, pero hindi, it ends again mm-hmm. in presenting so that's mm-hmm. what we're trying to tap so mm-hmm. kayo dyan, <laughs> mga nakikinig, if you have a ano a research product about translating something into a language in or dialect in the philippines again uh, talk to me mm-hmm. um, reach out to me and we can we can help you kind of develop that again no promises that it'll be published but we will help you configure it again into something that's publishable one more thing before i forget kasi baka makalimutan ko yung um there is also now right many many people many filipino pts pursuing dpts mm-hmm. right so transition what we call transitional dpts right. in here or even in the philippines, philippines. right true. yeah so I, I was asking them, ano ginagawa niyo dun sa capstone ninyo? What did you, where did your capstone go? Wala lang, sir. Mm-hmm. Nandyan lang. Tapos, mm-hmm. some people would say, ay, ayoko na. After that, ayoko na. Tapos na ako. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sinasabi ko, sayang naman, right? Because mm-hmm. again, I'm going from the perspective na other people might benefit from what you did. Mm-hmm. So, I would hope that you'd consider publishing it. So, that's another avenue. Mm-hmm. Yung mga tao dyan na nag-DPT, calling all Filipinos who did that. I know there's many of you. I've mm-hmm. seen you in Facebook showing your diplomas, <laughs> being happy. <laughs> Talk to me about converting your capstones into something that's, I know, scholarship, mm-hmm. right? a, a scholarship product. Right. Right. And, and there's many. I mean, I, I heard topics that are just of I know, interest. Mm-hmm. Right. In the Panaman Sana, it's uh, you know you you already put in the effort in you know researching, exactly. putting your work in, in that capstone, usually yeah. case reports. And yeah. uh, ang maganda kasi is like case reports nga or your capstone project is really specific to your practice and your your niche in mm-hmm. in, in the profession. So yeah, yeah, ang ganda sana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's it's a variety, like what you say, it's a variety of topics, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it, it really will benefit a whole variety of audiences mm-hmm. here and in the Philippines as well. So I, I would encourage people to, uh, know, mm-hmm. to talk to the editorial board and see if we can give you uh, resources or help you mm-hmm. kind of uh, make that into something that's publishable. Right. Some... Some capstones, pa nga, I think the requirements are in mapakita mo how a certain program that you're gonna make would be efficient to the hospital or yeah. efficient to the pro- practice. Na, yeah. na, na pag-aaralan or na 
na bibigyan ng attention before. Yeah. Pero ngayon, like with that sa so DPT, that's a, yeah. that's a good way. So that's a perfect example, right? So that's mm-hmm. a, another kind of type of case report. It's not just a patient, mm-hmm. uh, you know, description, or maybe it's a quality improvement yeah. project, mm-hmm. right. right? So there's there's many that you can really do. Exactly. I think because um, when we we talk about case reports, lagi na iisip ng mga PTs, ay it's it's the lowest form of uh, sa hierarchy ng mga studies. Eh, bakit pa ako nagawa? Yeah. Eh, may mga nakagawa na siguro ng systematic review or yung mga uh, sure. or RCTs. So pero you're giving your uh, your your unique experience or your unique technique or, or intervention or the patient's response to whatever. Yeah. So Absolutely. it still adds. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So think about Bo Bather and Brunstrom. They go pisa yung kanilang mga ideas as case reports, right? Mm-hmm. Descriptions of the patients that they saw and they made miracles mm-hmm. out of it. Or like Umfred. I mean, when I see Darcy Umfred treat, it's like, my God, and you know what would do this uh, It's mm-hmm. just amazing what they do, right? Mm-hmm. And then so if if you're able to articulate what you thought you did, mm-hmm. that is really quite helpful to other people, mm-hmm. right? Because they can uh, try to replicate it, right? Mm-hmm. So you can be like a mini boba, uh, <laughs> mini, right. you know. So mm-hmm. I, I you know, you, who knows if you develop a technique now. No. Mm-hmm special to you right mm-hmm. the johan technique <laughs> of something the right? lapaz that's your last name right yeah the La Paz. method or approach in right. doing something right mm-hmm. so you just never know and it mm-hmm. starts with just one patient case mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and and what's unique in the philippines because hindi sila bound by whatever insurance you know it's all mm-hmm. cash based so they're they have the freedom yeah. to you know uh do interventions for their patients as long as their patients right. are you know, would agree to it so right. i mean even you know unique patients unique cases like that yeah kaya maganda magproduce ng philippines ng, uh their own perspective in the yeah. in, in the body of knowledge i totally, I totally agree i totally mm-hmm. agree 100 percent. so the the site of PHJPT is already live. Mm-hmm. So uh, I will add that to the show description para yes. for the our listeners if they are if they want to check that out, know how to submit then doon lahat. Uh, you can learn, you know, the manuscript guidelines, any mga policies and you know what the journal is all about and doon sa yes. website. So if you yes feel like you want to publish and check that out and can reach out to do that as well uh, for mentoring, for guidance. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have collaborators too in the Philippines who are interested in the Philippines. Reach out to the collaborators over there as right. well. Yeah. Good. yeah. So thank you, Duda, for that wonderful conversation uh, thank about you. writing and publishing. I'm sure a lot of our fellow Filipino physical therapists uh, in the Philippines and anywhere uh, they're listening would, you know, get an idea, probably spark their interest and be inspired to write and publish. So um, I just, before I let you go, I just have my last bites of questions. All right. Uh, My first one is, what's the, what's your recipe for success? Hard work. Hard. Number one, yeah, mm-hmm. hard work and um, love your work, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Always say yes. That's <laughs> always say yes. Oh, uh, <laughs> you know, you know, tema ng ating, I know. <laughs> always say yes. Yeah, yeah. yun ang ating tema ngayon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yep, yep, yep. Because you don't know what, you, you, uh, you don't know what opportunities you're closing if you say no. Yeah. And you, uh, and you won't know unless you try. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, my second question is um, what book or uh, podcast or you know uh, TV series or whatever that you've watched, read, or listened to that recently that helped you? Helped me? 
Mm -hmm. So I always, that's a great question. I have not read books for leisure in a while because <laughs> just busy. too busy, but I, I'm always inspired by, I know, by people who um, do their own thing and they don't really care what other people think because they're passionate about what they're doing. So the Jung series Pose, I don't know if you've heard mm -hmm. of it, P-O-S-E, yeah, right, Pose. Right. It's mm -hmm. about you know, the, the ballroom scene mm -hmm. in New York mm -hmm. in the 90s, 80s, late 80s, 90s during the AIDS epidemic, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and it's all about finding family. Mm -hmm. Right, finding family, people who support you, people who care for you, kahit na hindi ka nila kadugo. Right, right, um, mm -hmm. and then people just having passion and mm -hmm. uh, just don't really care what other people think mm -hmm. about what they do, as long as um, you know, um, and they just do whatever makes them feel happy mm -hmm. and um, inspired. And I've learned a lot from that, not to kind of look for other people to uh, know, to approve me, right? Mm -hmm. For right. for approval. Right. right. So I've gotten to that point that I don't really seek that and just kind of pursue my passion. It took me a while mm -hmm. to kind of get to that point. Um, mm -hmm. and so I'm I'm kind of inspired of, of those people who who just have the guts to be able to do that and mm -hmm. live their life. Was there a point that you were uh you mind what people are, what other people say oh yeah huh? <laughs> quite a bit right um, hey. especially with filipinos i think uh here right you're mm -hmm. especially if you're trying to break right that uh -huh. whatever glass ceiling whatever mm -hmm. um you know when That's you're true. in a room with with just a bunch of people who look different than mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. you know and it's like why do i belong here stuff mm -hmm. like that right yeah it happens mm -hmm. And I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I should adapt that. Because <laughs> yeah. five years na kalita, but I still feel like when I when I'm around other people, uh, yeah. not Filipinos, I feel like parang <laughs> I still feel different. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, exactly. I feel the same way. Yeah, mm -hmm. it took me a while mm -hmm. to kind of um, get to that. I just kind of think I. I can hold my own number one and I, number two. I, I know I can bring something to the table mm -hmm. that will be valuable for the group. Perfect. Uh, my, my third question is, what are the three ingredients? It can be a, a motto, a principle, a virtue, uh, mm -hmm. a, a characteristic that you carry with you every day. So what are the three things that make up do that? Um, so I can think of one for sure, and that's mm -hmm. kindness, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, I get this course because I teach, right? So mm -hmm. course evals, course evals scare me still. I mean, I've been looking at student course evals for over 35 years, but like what we're saying, Greg, critiques are still really hard, uh -huh. but I, you know, um, mm -hmm. but I don't really at this point in time, because I, kind of know exactly what I want the students to learn. Mm -hmm. So what I look for when I get feedback from them is something that uh, tells me that I was kind to them mm -hmm. more than anything else, because that's really what I want to, you know, to impart is mm -hmm. kindness, right? Kindness and compassion. Mm -hmm. So Dudan is kind, do then uh, believes in second chances. So that's another one that's really strong for me. Mm -hmm. I believe in second chances because people have given me many, many second yes. chances. And I, I really believe in that. I really believe that, um, yeah, uh, second chances are important, right? And then do, do it right the first time. Do your best the first time, mm -hmm. right? If I didn't do my best the first time, I was... I wouldn't have impressed many people mm -hmm. who'd allow, who had opened doors for me after mm -hmm. that. So just try to do the best that you can, especially mm -hmm. that first time. Mm -hmm. maganda, maganda yung kadikit ng when you say yes. When you say yes, may kakabit na uh, you know, responsibility. That's that right. You have to do your best. Yeah. 
pag gumawa ka, do uh, your best, uh, right? Hindi uh, pwede yung half-half lang yung work. Hindi uh, pwedeng fake it till you make it. You, you no. really have to put, it, put your work in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, kasi it'll show, right? It'll, mm-hmm. it'll really show. Right, right. So yeah, so kindness, uh, second chances, and do your best uh, the first time. Yep. All right. Good, good. All right. So again, thank you very much for time and for being here in the podcast. And again, um, I want to acknowledge you first uh, for the work that you're uh, putting into, you know, the the Philippine Journal for Physical Therapy for writing and sharing your expertise and knowledge in the textbooks and the and the publications that you you do. So yeah, I want to acknowledge you for that. Thank you for that. So um, as a takeaway, yung pabaon natin for our audience, gusto natin dali nila in their practice. What is one thing that you want them to take away from our conversation tonight? That I would hope that they, it's, so it, it, what's in that because Ratatouille, so and anyone can cook, right? When you think about the Ratatouille movie, right? Anyone can write, anyone can publish. Um, and believe me when I say that, right? That anyone can publish, and any and anyone I know has something that's worth publishing, if you just get the right mentor to be able to help you. Yeah. Again, thank you very much, Dudan. Salamat. Thank you for the time. <laughs>